Now, if you can't really see what's behind me, um, that's Tim Poole talking today about how people are threatening businesses around him and threatening to come to his home. And pe somebody actually did come to his home because he's holding an event in his town. Now, the event apparently is trying to get people from both sides to talk and debate, and we can't have that now, can we? So then someone showed up to his house, I don't know if it was today or yesterday, and tried to break in, so here's a clip of that. Take a look. I've just been pulled out of a deep sleep, and I have no idea what's happening. My brain's not functioning yet. And I heard this noise. My lights were on. Now, my lights are voice active due to the nature the, the of the local issues that have been happening, because I live here. And the Antifa people who have been harassing and threatening these businesses, I took this very, very seriously. Who in their right mind shows up to a house at 4.30 in the morning walking, and it's not my neighbors, anybody I know would have sent me a text and said, hey, I need to stop by, it's an emergency. And if it was an emergency, they'd be yelling my name. Now, this was different. I took down the background because it's really bright. So Pool is actually somebody who I really respect. I don't think anyone gets more fair in the modern media than Tim Pool. I also see some, kind of some similarities and he records. I think he's probably recording at like 2 in the morning sometimes. I've done that. It's the benefit of recording inside. Uh, people can't really tell. Um, and what I also like about watching Tim Pool is it's watching a person progress in real time over the course of a few years, realizing how crazy... DNC has become while still keeping your liberal principles and I really respect that um, there's a lot of principles that you have to agree with with what he presents but he's also willing to call out the other things which is what I think everybody has to do and meet in the middle now you could be slightly right or slightly left and meet in the middle and call out the crazies on your side or on the other side it's like if the blood and the crips are fighting isn't it weird how they're also blue and red I just thought about that you gotta call out uh I don't know. Is there a length at which the Bloods and the Crips say this is too much? Shooting women and children, probably. That's pr I think that's where it is. They got to call out those people. So I respect that he's willing to be fair, and I respect that he's willing to call out things like that, and that he keeps all of his principles and calls out the crazy DNC members. Even it, it's harder in Canada because our crazies aren't crazy enough. You know, the Liberal Party's basically just old people at this point. Everyone's either gone conservative or what's called the New Democratic Party, the NDP. And they're still, like, I still don't agree with them. I still think that they they want way too much taxes and they're really social justice -y, and they are. But mostly they focus on, like, teachers' unions and LGBT rights and stuff like that. And while I don't agree with it at all, there, there's, like... There's no faction of people wearing orange going around beating people up. There has been Antifa in Canada, don't get me wrong. Especially um, in smaller places they've tried to pop up. But they've been essentially been stomped out. It's pretty, pretty nice. <laughs> so, back to the main topic. Tim is recording a video. Um, in this video, he's recording himself, obviously, talking about his event and how these people tried to break into his house and he woke him up at like four in the morning he called the police he's talking to them and then while he's talking about it somebody actually comes back and tries to break into his house again he thinks it's the same person they're not sure <laughs> but before I show you the clip I'm gonna do what Tim would do make him very proud get, get some promos in don't forget to subscribe to me on Patreon, just a dollar a month you can help support my channel. I've got another channel called Andrew Does, if you want to check that out, youtube.com slash Andrew Does. If you want to follow me on Instagram, that would help, also at Andrew Does. I'm getting a new microphone, um, I'm trying to go to Politicon to get more interviews for you guys. I'm probably going to have to go back to work soon because YouTube has long since demonetized me, uh, so I'm trying to do this with with uh with like no money at all <laughs> sad, sad story you know the womp womp thing uh, i can't be a youtuber you guys so i'm not gonna call myself a victim here um but that's just how it is and patreon support is appreciated social media support is su support is appreciated so here's tim pool uh like i said recording and then somebody is trying to break into his house it's not supposed to be off but i guess someone hit the switch and it's really annoying boy am i frustrated about that um, but, you know, with the light on, you can see everything perfectly, and the cop was like, well, you, you should... Yeah, it's one guy's... 
might be the same guy. I really don't know, but considering, I, I don't know if you're the same guy I talked to this morning or what, but. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Now, I can't think of a mere f more fair journalist than Tim Poole, but because he speaks out against Antifa and because he's doing an event where he wants to have people arguing for both sides, he must be attacked. He, he can't get, you can't get away with this now in 2019. The guy who was at breaking in the first time, he mentions in the video that he claimed to be a fan. Yeah, just, and fans just tend to show up at four in the morning. This isn't a Tana Manjo or whatever the YouTube girl is. It's not a Logan Paul fans showing up at all times in the, in the night. Uh, Logan Paul outed Post Malone's house one time. I don't know if you know that. Showed his, showed where he lived on TV. Pretty stupid. Um, they just want to shut down opposing views in order to win. That's what it comes down to. Which ends up, in the end, of course, making them the fascists. And if you see uh, Crowder's latest, uh, Crowder Confronts, hilarious, goes and confronts an Antifa guy who's been convicted of trying to do a bunch of stuff, wants to set Steven Crowder on fire, and he kind of gets through to him, but in the end he explains that what he's doing makes him the fascist, and it kind of looks like he gets it, but probably, probably not. And they just want to shut down these opposing views because it's easier than actually having an argument. And I'm sure you've heard other people say this, but it's more prevalent than ever, I think especially in American politics, you'll notice that people who are really far left, and I'm not, and it sucks again having to point this stuff out as being a problem, but people like the Squad, AOC, and such, they'll never debate anybody. They'll never go on TV, they'll never go on a show that opposes their views, because it's too hard for them to deal with opposing views, because then the whole thing gets blown up. It's like saying, imagine the New York Yankees were obviously the best team most of the time in baseball, and then they just never had to play anybody. They just go and sign all the best players. According to them, they have all the best players, and then they don't have to play anybody, and it's just like, you get to be in the World Series no matter what. You've won so much, you know, you can just be in the World Series, you don't have to play anybody. And then everybody else is just like, well, I think I have a better team with better strategy. Can we play them just to make sure? No, I don't want to take that chance. We get we get in the World Series no matter what. So it's much easier to just stop an opinion from being shared or debunked than it is to actually having to come up with the ideas to stop it. Leaders do not want dialogue in this way, and it's sad to say that some of them are just doing it for power. They're just in public positions for power, and they don't want to have these dialogues because it results in their loss of power. Or in some cases, you know, you, you don't want people to find out that you... Uh, allegedly married your brother, had an affair with people. You know who I'm talking about, right? Mm-hmm.